This screen recording is the first in a collection of resources to help you in the Principles of Criminal Justice module. So please download the first set of lecture notes and I will talk you through them. So the first page of the module specification has an overview of um, what we're going to be doing in the de description in the module. Um, has a list of uh, topics for the outline syllabus, which I'll talk about more in a minute, um, and also highlights the recommended reading for the module. So with the reading, um, I do have to declare an interest uh, in the book because I'm lucky enough to be able to be a co-author um, for the book. So excuse my bias, um, <laughs> but I, I, I do think it stands up because um, the book is, is very different to other comparable books um, as it has been written for students. Normally, uh, academic books are written for academics, so it, it, it is a different uh, type of a book. Uh, it's also very long. Uh, it's a thousand pages long almost, so it will help you with your other modules um, as well. Module spec also um, in, uh, tells us uh, how you will be assessed um, in the module. So there are two um, assessments, uh, two pieces of work that uh, hopefully we can call uh, PCJ1 for the first assignment and PCJ2 for the second assignment. Um, now, as it, as it says there, normally uh, it's in an examination form uh, is the second assessment in the module, uh, but that is unlikely to happen this year because of the pandemic. Um, but anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The whole kind of point uh, of, of the module, it, you know, for the first six weeks is to help you with the first assessment. So those are your two uh, assessments. I will tell you more about them uh, as, as, as the module develops uh, and the four learning outcomes uh, are there in the module spec. To achieve success um, in the module, um, your Moodle use is going to be really important. Um, and I've already set up the, uh, the, the Moodle page to reflect uh, some of the recommended reading um, that you'd need to do to, um, as I say, achieve success in the first assessment. So using these kinds of sources um, will prove your abilities as a criminologist. Now, as you know from uh, semester one, using academic sources are really important. So um, these resources have got to be used. The lecture notes um, are also um, a, a good source of help. Um, they are detailed um, resources, um, but they do break things down uh, for you in uh, more manageable um, kind of chunks of information. Um, in a minute, I'll go through the first week's notes. Um, the structure of, of those notes are, are the same as the structure by all the other lectures in the module. Uh, so that means that they include a range of resources and opportunities for assessing your progress uh, in this module. As regards um, your progress, um, this document um, at the top of the Moodle page um, is, um, is what we call um, the progress document. So if you copy and paste it, um, you will get this document um, and you'll see down the side how things are organized for how um, as I say your progress in this module um, is, is meant to happen. So everything uh, on here is geared towards the deadline of the first assessment um, which is the 8th of March. So up until that point each week key sources of evidence are going to be provided as you'll see from the headings on the Moodle page as criminologists, we must use these academic sources because they provide us with evidence that might not be commonly known. Or maybe it is known, but people in power have decided to ignore this evidence. So people with power, so I'm talking about some politicians, some parts of the media, some businesses and some large corporations. Um, this is, you know, is an angle that we, we want to encourage you to be, to, to be investigating because the abuse of power by powerful people is hopefully something you're beginning to recognise in your studies of criminology and criminal justice so far. So the scheme of work highlights the focus um, of each week um, and these different titles um, should be remembered as they show the direction of the module. Uh, you may also notice that it includes the term uh, assessment clinics um, these are an informal thing, it sounds a very formal name, but basically these are the sessions um, whereby um, 
we can give you feedback uh, on, on the work that you're producing. So this is where we can test the work before you submit it. Uh, so we can look at drafts and have various discussions. So these sessions will take place in a variety of different formats, maybe face to face, maybe online, what, what uh, you know, other online methods, whatever suits you. Um, so uh, I know it's a bit nerve wracking realizing that you've got an assignment to do in you know uh, you know by the eighth of March, but hopefully you can see that there's opportunities here uh, where your work will be discussed. Um, the clinics can be really useful for everybody because they generate loads of feedback. Um, and we can discuss things and we can share the answers. Uh, and in the the progress document under the Q and A section, uh, that's where I'll write up the general kind of feedback that that will guide um, everybody up to doing the assessment for the first assessment. So this is the first um, lecture, the first set, set of notes. Um, so what I would do uh, if I was you, I would um, highlight um, all of this. Um, so press control and then A, uh, and then copy and paste it into your own document. Um, because as you'll see in a bit, there are spaces in these lecture notes that need to be filled in um, with, with, with your thoughts. So as I say, you don't have to do this, but um, it is something that will help you uh, as the module uh, goes on. So every set of lecture notes has what's known as a set of key issues. So these are two or three mini learning outcomes that uh, each lecture um, we, we wish to achieve. So from today's session, um, we're hopefully going to be recognising some of the difficulties in answering the what is crime question uh, and also appreciating some of the problems in criminalising conduct which I'll talk about uh, you know, in a few minutes. Um, you'll also see um, that um, each uh, set of lecture notes has a, a recap section at the end uh, and also a, a next step section. So in other words, what to do for next week. Um, so each of those points in terms of recapping what we've done and looking forward how we can take this further uh, are, are important for, for, for each lecture. So... We're looking at um, this first um, mini learning outcome, some of the difficulties in answering the what is crime question. Um, for this module, um, I, I suppose, we, you know, it, it's more of a what is justice um, uh, problem. They're very similar questions. Um, so basically, you, you will be on your way to achieving uh, this first mini learning outcome um, if you can explain why answering this question is so difficult. So um, th there's a few points there on, on page three that you might want to um, consider. Um, but mainly um, looking at things like this in the sense that, um, that crime is continually changing. So, you know, so being aware of these examples of things that either were criminal and are now or weren't, and, you know, etc. This changing view of crime, um, you know, w will hopefully show that you can explain that crime isn't written on tablets of stone, that where things are set and can never change, it's a continually evolving thing. Um, it's also um, a complicated um, thing because um, hopefully you're going to spend a bit of time thinking about this case in case of DPP and Morgan. Um, now, the reason why we've included this um, case is to show some of the difficulties in working out what is criminal. Um, so, uh, obviously, it's a sexual offence case, so it's a very serious case. Um, but, um, you know, th th this is an unusual kind of case, or very it's an unpleasant, um, you know, example. But normally speaking, criminal law is only enforced against people who are at fault. So... After you've read this paragraph about this case, you know, you've got to think about whether the, the, the three defendants, um, you know, were at fault. Certainly the defendant, Morgan, clearly is at fault um, in what he's done there. But the, in terms of the three defendants, were, were they at fault? Um, you know, and maybe think about this. Would you still think your answer, would you still think they were at fault if one of these was your son or was your brother? Um, I mean, it really is a horrible kind of example, but it does show how, how complicated some crimes can be. On, on a similar level, um, in terms of uh, euthanasia, looking at this paragraph there, uh, again, it's another example of where people may be legally responsible, but you know, have, are, are they actually at fault for what they've done? Now, the harm principle um, is another um, important principle. Um, again, it, it's it's fairly vague. Um, so, um, what we can do is we can we can break it down into its different parts. So. Um, what I'd like to do is looking at the gaps there in terms of one, two, and three. If we're looking um, at uh, at what 
John Stuart Mill said in terms of the first part um, of uh, of the harm principle is that power can only be rightfully exercised to prevent harm to other people. So that's the first criteria, to prevent harm to others. The second thing, um, whether it's harm in yourself, then in terms of the harm principle, is not a good enough reason. It's not a sufficient reason to make something criminal. So that's the second part. And then the third part uh, to the harm principle is just because others think that it's it's more in intelligent or it's more sensible, uh, you know, whatever their opinion is, it, it is not a good enough reason to make something criminal. So it's those three parts gives you a little bit of detail to what the harm principle um, sets out to do. So again, there are no easy answers. Um, and whether harm includes physical only physical harm or whether it includes emotional and psychological harm, um, if it does include psychological harm, which presumably, you know, these days we recognise more of this, um, but does that include what we call, might call disgusting things or things that are offensive? Or uh, the example of, of, of that case there in terms of the naked rambler. The influence of money um, is important. Um, looking at this hypothetical um, example from the film um, Fight Club, um, now um, and you see uh, a, a case there, and uh, it, it did happen a similar kind of thing in the Ford Pinto uh, scandal, which you know is well worth researching if you get a chance. Uh, but the film Fight Club also takes us back to this thing what we spoke about on page four, uh, this thing called autonomy. So. As Fight Club was about unofficial boxing fights, um, in terms of autonomy, in terms of people's freedom, we need to be thinking about whether people should have the freedom to do this. And whether you agree or not depends on what your view of acceptable autonomy is. The lecture finishes uh, on page six um, with an invitation um, to yourselves to think about the rule of law principle uh, and the behaviour of food companies. Now, uh, in terms of the seminar work um, for next week, um, we, we need to read uh, Kroll 2012, where the research comes from, and in a couple of paragraphs explain the issue of this, this point about things being lawful but awful. Um, this work can be done if you download um, a copy of uh, Kroll 2012. Um, so remember what we're trying to do is trying to make some points about the point about things being lawful but awful. Um, so there are some examples there uh, in, in terms of what, what Passes in 2005 said. So it's actually it, it, the term starts there. But anyway, just to give you um, some examples and how you can use subheadings in pieces of work to, to, to help you. So basically, if you look there, there's what in terms of labeling, in terms of unhealthy food, in terms of food and exploitation and in terms of economic costs. So those four subheadings there. So you've got four examples in which you can um, write about in terms of um, yeah, in, in, in terms of how things might technically be legal, but they are still um, harmful. So this is basically how we're going to study uh, in, in the module. There are going to be lots of other things. There's going to be videos, there's going to be quizzes uh, and various other bits and pieces. Um, so I've tried not to make this too bombarding. I know there's a lot of stuff um, to take and I know it's a bit of an unusual time for everyone. But um, if we if we talk uh, to each other and we keep communicating, we, we will succeed. So thank you for now and I'll be in touch soon.